Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Thursday morning. I'm glad you're here. Today's program is a special one. We're talking about how to deal with your teens and how to survive those teen years if you're a parent. 436 Me TV Option 11. Connect With Me starts right now. Back here on the program on a Thursday morning. Glad you're here on Ventura TV's turf right here inside the building. And uh, it's where we broadcast each and every day. Quick programming note, of course, for tomorrow. We've got Becky Cinema. She'll run down all the movies for us. So what's out there in the theaters, what you can see now, and what movies uh, she likes, what movies she doesn't like. Of course, she'll give us the thumbs up, thumbs down on each and every one of them. Then a first-time guest will be here on Monday. It is Alex Delgado of KC Channel 24. And, um, of course, uh, she does very much the same thing that I do here. Only it's a different kind of a program. She has a program each and every day on KC24 starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 4. It's a one-hour show. It's not a call-in show. It is live, though. A little bit different format also uh, as well. But Alex, glad that she's going to be here. We can talk about, uh, well, we can compare notes, I guess you could say. For now, you're watching us live on Comcast Channel 375 as usual. It's Comcast Cable TV, my friends, and if you don't have Comcast, it's not to worry. Between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning, each and every Monday through Friday, you can catch us over the air broadcast, 13.1 and 43.6 over the air. Then the replay comes up later in the day at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 13.6 U2, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6 Biz TV. After that, you can go to our webpage uh, if you want to go to VenturaBroadcasting.com or go to our YouTube channel, whichever uh, the case may be, you can choose whatever show you'd like to see from the last five and a half years. You know, today we're talking about parents who have kids, but not only kids, specifically teenagers and how to survive those teenage years. They can be the most difficult of times, not only for a parent, but for that teenager himself or herself. It's a struggle to get through high school, middle school. And you know what? I, I just want to pose a couple of questions here to begin the show. And have you noticed that your son or your daughter might be a little punchy lately, maybe a little bit angry, a little bit depressed, kind of walking around in a fog, kind of like a zombie, lack of sleep. They're staying up all night on their phone, on their computer games, whatever the case. The hormones are kicking in, they're talking back. They're constantly on their phone doing whatever they're doing. Well, let me take you inside the home, a typical American home um, that may be dealing with a teenager, trying to get that teenager ready for school. Each and every morning can be a chore and a job all by itself. If you're a single parent, if you're not a single parent, you know, in a lot of ways it doesn't matter. Sometimes having two parents in the house doesn't make a difference trying to get that son or that daughter out of bed to get to school in the morning. Let's take you inside the O'Donnell house, a typical home that as a teenager, any home that you go into across the country, you may see this. The sun is up and inside the O'Donnell's house, they are trying to get Charlie up. Child? Child? What? Pam tries. Come on. No! And then Charles Sr. Charles. Mm. Time to get up. No, just leave you alone. All right, well, just get out. I want to sleep. All right, well, time to get up. I'll give you 10 minutes. By the time he gets up in the morning to the time he walks out the door, there's, uh, a matter of like 11 minutes maximum. So he's a procrastinator. He'll, he'll just stay in bed. They happen to live in East Providence, Rhode Island, but parents everywhere will recognize the look 
and the pacing. It's a school day, and there's a teenager to get out of bed. We have to remind him, do you hear? Get your books, take your backpack, have your key for the house. Um, it's a normal routine type of thing. Just study? Oh, how do you study, man? Practice. Bacon's a little better. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, he's a very friendly person. He's very outgoing. He's very well liked outside the house. It's almost like he's a different kid than he is at home because they don't get the attitude that we get. Well, three more days, you're all done. School's out. Mm -hmm. One more. How come you don't have to go to school on Friday? Because I spend the beneficial with all kinds of distributed. Well, um, maybe it'd be a good idea for you to go into school. No. They're mailing it. Why bother going in and getting out at 10.30? I don't have to go in. We'll see. That was part of a Frontline special, and it, you know, that thing was recent. It wasn't all that old, not all that long ago, that Frontline, of course, PBS runs Frontline. Uh, they did a, a, an entire special on how to survive the teen years. You know, it does go by fairly fast. Uh, once your teen uh, uh, hits a certain age, you know, whether it be 14, 15, 16 years old, you know, you, you see a change in that child, and it has to do with the brain. Now, our expert's supposed to be in here today. His name is Peter Nazaridian. You've seen him before. He's our resident family therapist. He, I just got a text from him. He's running a bit late, so he's going to be here at some point in the program. He told me on my own, I'm on my own for a while. Well, I've been on my own for a long time, my friends. How many years can I count that I've been alone? So we're here and you're there. So as long as Peter's not here, call in and offer up some opinions on how to raise a child, especially once they reach those teen years. You know, the front of the brain, the frontal cortex, they call it. And I want to ask Peter about this when he gets here. What happens to that part of the brain? It's just not developed yet. And what is that part of the brain? So, 436 Me TV Option 11. We'll be back with your phone calls and your thoughts about raising a teenager. Oh my God, have you seen a change recently? Back with your phone calls in just a moment. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Yes, they're guaranteed to push against your boundaries. Right. Even if you think you're open-minded, they will find that edge and that they will challenge you on that. And so they are hardwired to be dramatic then, so we wouldn't, oh. say, we shouldn't take it too personally. Absolutely. I say they're, they're hardwired for drama in four ways, a quadruple threat. <laughs> they, there's the hormones, and but most of it is their brain development, which is the undeveloped prefrontal cortex, which gives you an active limbic system. And let me explain a little bit, because people have heard that before, but everything that frustrates a parent, like not planning ahead, uh, managing emotions, not thinking about you know the big picture. Um, is engaging in risky behavior. And engaging in risky, it's because of that undeveloped prefrontal cortex. And also what that means is if that's not kind of online, they're spending a lot of time in the lower brain, which is that reactive brain that goes into fight, flight, freeze. Now, how would you then recommend a mother, because a lot of 
a lot of the conflict arises from a mother seeing her daughter engage in actions and activities that she legitimately thinks is dangerous. Yes, and absolutely. The, the child doesn't see it that way. She com thinks she's completely <laughs> ready for everything that she's doing. And so how do you then reassure yourself that your child is actually safe without overreacting and perhaps giving them some distance? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Fear is huge. And, and moms can go from zero to 100 in a nanosecond, and I've lived it. Right. So what's really good is to be able to talk yourself off the cliff mm -hmm. and really what I call is dismantle the F-bomb. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, is it really true? Whatever, what, what's the big fear? Mm -hmm. What are the worries around that? And you want to break it down into effective action and then, you know, then take action what, what you can So do. I want to offer up a couple of opinions here of my own before I get moving here. And by the way, that videotape um, was provided to us uh, by uh, the Wall Street Journal. It was Colleen O'Grady who wrote a book about marriage um, and family uh, therapy. She is a therapist uh, uh, as well. She, she wrote a book that's called Nail Down the Drama. So when you see the drama going on with your teenager, I've found and discovered the best way to do is just walk away. And especially mother and daughter relationship, you know, there's nothing a father can do to get in between that. You just have to ignore it and not get involved. That's my best advice from what I've seen my daughter get into it with uh, her mother. They get into a little scrape, you know, um, and, uh, well, uh, I just stay out of it. None of my business and let them deal with it, let them take care of it, let them hash out their own differences and their own problems. All right, a caller is waiting uh, on the telephone here, all right, until Peter gets here. Our family therapist of our own here on Connect With Me is Peter Nazaridian. He's running a bit late today. He texted me, but I want to get his idea on what to do about you know, surviving the teen years. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Well, hello, John, and uh, sorry that your guest is not there yet, but uh, I'll try and uh, throw some questions. Maybe you could ask him when he does get there and uh, yeah. um, give you some of my opinion. So first of all, um, I have a 12-year-old son that's going to be turning 13 here in about another month or two, and we're already starting to see the attitude, and he wants his independence, and he likes to spend his time in his room with his headset on watching you know his YouTube videos or or chatting with his friends or playing video games and you know he's got some other hobbies but uh, one thing that we've kind of done in our household and I think that he overall he's a pretty good kid he keeps his grades up uh, um, he's you know tries to you know he's pretty smart so he finishes his homework rather quickly yeah but he does have attitude and uh, what we started in our house about uh, maybe when he was 10, but um, we had to apply it more, is what we call an attitude grade at home. So, you know, we just like he gets graded on his attitude and academics and, you know, PE and all of that at school, um, we give him a grade um, based on his attitude, how he's treating his brother and sister, how he's talking to his mother, how he's, uh, you know, if he's responding when we ask him to do something or to help with something in the house. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it ends up with a lot of drama and him running to his room and slamming the door and, and then he'll <laughs> calm down. Um, but for most of the part, we stand our ground and he yeah. knows that if he could, you know, if he really messes up, if he, you know, I mean, he hasn't really hit his brother or sister, but he's said some pretty mean things or done some pretty mean things. And uh, so he gets, he gets, uh, he will have, if he gets a F or a D, um, he'll get a warning when he's at a C when it's on the verge of going to a D, but if he gets to a D, he loses something. And, you know, it could be his guitar, it could be his video game, it could be his laptop. Sometimes it's all of the above. And the the more he carries on that attitude, the longer those privileges uh, are not given to him. So, yeah. And it works. Um, so I have my 9-year-old daughter who's, I think, in our house. She, I think she's got a closer bond with uh, with me. Um, and I'd be curious to hear from Peter um, maybe what I should expect when she does hit her teen years. Right now, she's like daddy's little girl, but yeah, uh, but I, you I know have what? a feeling that's going to change. Gonna change. change. The, 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 um, mm -hmm. Listen, caller, uh, there's, there's a huge difference between the age of 9. From the age of 9 until they reach 13, you're going to see a massive change, as I did in my two kids. You know, I have a 16-year-old son. I got a 14-year-old uh, daughter. 
the change is like night and day. It's like living on Mars one day and coming down to Earth the next day, and maybe the next day you're on the moon. Um, it's just so much different because the brain develops and they think differently. They mature and they realize and they're more aware of what's going on in the world than they are at nine years old. Listen, I'm not a family therapist. I'm not an expert. I can only go by what I've seen uh, trial and error with my kids. I, I, I don't know if you've seen that with your son, that dramatic difference, that three-year span uh -huh. between nine yeah. and 13. And he's smart, so he, he tries, you know, we have to always try and stay ahead of him and think ahead of him because he'll you know the stories he comes up with or the uh, just you know the things he does it's like you know he he's he's kind of smart about it but you know we kind of have to keep yeah. him in control and that's kind of that 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 grading system seems to be working at least it right now it may change in the next year or two whatever but um, well, and I have a I have a warning for you too you've only got four more years in four years wait until your son um, reaches the point that he wants his uh, driver's permit. Oh, he's already it, waiting for that. He he can't wait. He yeah. Can't wait. He's 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 already counting the days, and he's already got his eye on the. Uh, yeah. One of our see, cars. so that's going to be that's going to be. I, I'm telling you, it it changes. I think the parent to a certain extent because now you have a completely different worry on your hands. Oh yeah. You know the 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 teenager is is not 18 yet. That the the son or the daughter is not of adult age. It's not 18. And so, um, yet they're living under your roof, and at the same time, they're closing in on adulthood. Basically, my son, who's 16 and a half, he's like a, he's a young man. He's a young man, but he's not quite an adult. I, and so that's a very that's a very tight window right there. And I think as a as a parent, we just kind of have to kind of balance when it's time to you know let him do things and give him more freedoms and i think each kid is going to be different based on their maturity you know there's things i let my son do but i wouldn't let my daughter do at the same age you know and yeah. just because of their their the difference in the way they handle things but but well, i've been told that if you put too tight a rope around them and the leash is too tight that when they get to a certain age, uh, maybe 16, 18 years old, then they start to rebel. Once they're 18, you can't tell them what to do. They're an adult, uh -huh. legally speaking. But um, well, I'm curious to see what other some of your other viewers maybe they how they handle their kids. I know that you got a lot of viewers that yeah, uh, yeah, are watching. But so. again, I just want to reiterate: I'm not an expert. I'm not a therapist. And I can only judge uh, what's happening in my household with my two teenagers. I don't know if that's the same in every household. It might be typical. It may not be. I don't know. But see, and, and see if you agree with me, uh, with me, caller. I'm a single parent. But I think in this day and age, it doesn't matter if you're a single parent or if you're married and there are two parents under one roof. You're going to confront some of the same problems because teenagers are teenagers. I think the only difference is that we could tag team, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'm getting frustrated and ready to blow my top, I could walk out and my wife will go in and you know be the you know calm calmly deal right. with it, or we'll flip you know vice versa. So that's helpful. But other right. than that, I mean, kids are going to be kids, I guess. Okay. So thanks, Sounds John. Good. Take care. All right, uh, we're going to take a break here, but I appreciate that call. And uh, Peter Nazaridian is supposed to be here today. He's our family therapist, and he talks about all sorts of things. He's talked about suicide before. He's talked about marriages before, how to save your marriage, how to save your relationship. Today, we're talking about how you can survive the teen years as a parent, whether you're a single parent or a double parent household. You can kind of tag team, as our caller said. Hey, we have an open phone line. Until Peter gets here, why don't you call in, offer up an opinion. I'm sure you're at home raising kids, raising grandkids maybe in some cases uh, with some of our viewers. Uh, I'm sure that's the case. If you're raising uh, grandkids, it's a little bit different than raising your own. Maybe you're babysitting the entire day while your kids are at work. Who knows? 436 Me TV option 11. We're going to be back with our program here on Connect With Me, still waiting, waiting anxiously. Let's see what time it is. Uh, 1019, and waiting for Peter Nazaridian to come in the house. He's running late, ran into traffic. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, back in a moment.
The following is a list of celebrities you will not see on MeTV programs. Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Lohan, Snooki, Paris Hilton, Perez Hilton, Honey Boo Boo, Justin Bieber, Simon Cowell, Chris Brown, Miley Cyrus, and the real housewives of any place. This is who you will see on MeTV programs. Lucy, Ralph, Mary, Perry, Gilligan, Kenneth, Spock, Batman, Rowdy, Festus, and the Beaver. Me TV. Thanks for watching. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. And away we go. Here's the place that makes you smile. Stick around and stay a while. We're the home of great TV. That's memorable. That's, That's me. Follow me, sir. Call them classics. Call them the best. Call them favorites. Be our guest. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see. There's only one. Me TV. All you have to do is watch me. Are you kidding me? Follow me. That's memorable. That's me. That's me. Me, me, me. Uh, me TV. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Giddy up with westerns, we've got the best ones. Superhero sci-fi spin, grab the popcorn and stay in. Dramas, mystery, and action, take a look and see what happens. Carol, Andy, Lucy, Mash, timeless comedies full of laughs. Hey, that's me! That's me. That's me, Chief. Yeah, me, me, me. Me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's me. Me. Me, TV. I think the problem parents have is that once their kid becomes a teenager, for a brief period of time, it's as though they've been invaded by another body. They need to learn how to relate to being a kid. I think they forgot. We now know that there's a lot of dynamic activity. In many ways, it's the most tumultuous time of brain development since coming out of the womb. I swear to God, I'm never talking to any of your friends you again. I'm never talking no. to you again. I swear you don't to have God. To say, did I say anything? Did I say Why didn't you call you your mom's mom? Those cells and connections that are used will survive and flourish. Those cells and connections that are not used will wither and die. With all of the things that teenagers have available to them, their sleep has been shoved into an ever-narrowing window. Living in a teenage life today is completely different from before. I know it's very stressful on adults, but they're going to have to realize that it's today's world, that's how it is. Typical household across America, teens fighting one another, whether it be brother and sister, or maybe they're fighting with their cousin, or maybe their parents, who knows? But uh, I want you to call in and weigh in at 436 Me TV Option 11 if you got a teenager at home and you want to offer up an opinion right now about what's going on in your household. It's an open phone line, and today we're talking about how to survive the teen years. It's not an easy thing. I've got two teenagers at home, and one of the things that a lot of people have told me, not only parents, but therapists uh, that I've seen occasionally, including our guy Peter, who's on the way, by the way, I called him. So um, one of the things that people have told me is, is once you get to the stage where your kids become, um, where, where everything is drama to them, you know, everything becomes drama. If you, you make a simple statement, a harmless statement, one that's totally out of the blue, but it, it's totally harmless, okay? The drama begins, the yelling begins, uh, and you know, the doors start slamming, uh, the stomping out of the room, all that, and maybe something goes flying across the room, who knows? The best way to handle that is to ignore it. Uh, offer up some kind of a discipline, obviously, for your kids. You might want to take something away. But take it from me. You're going to reach a point when you won't be able to pick up your child anymore and take him to his room. You won't be able to 
put your daughter in timeout. She'll be too big. So what's the best way to handle it? The best way to handle it is try to communicate with your, your children. Don't, don't be their friend. That's a, I'm just telling you what I've been told by several parents across the landscape, my friends, over the last 12 years. Just advice I'm giving you that's been passed on to me. Whether or not it works, uh, I, I don't know. But you can't be their friend is what I've been told. They'll have friends growing up. When they become adults in their 20s and 30s, that's when you can become their friend. But right now you're trying to guide them in the right place, in the right direction, so they can make decisions on their own that won't hurt them in the future. And don't, don't pull on that leash too tight. Give a little bit of a, a have some slack on that leash so your, your child can make mistakes without hurting himself or himself, and maybe things will work out. If you feel that your kid needs to be on medication, if you feel he needs a therapist, then by all means, explore that route. Um, but for your own sanity, don't, you know, if, if your child is, is, is towing the line for the most part, going to school, getting fairly good grades, is staying away from drugs, is staying away from gangs, then, you, you know, you're pretty lucky at that point. You're lucky, believe me, because there's a lot out there that our kids are exposed to uh, in this day and age. But if your kids, if you find out that your kids are involved in drugs, in alcohol, maybe a gang or whatever, then you have a completely different problem. Then I can't help you. Maybe Peter can. Thank goodness uh, I don't have those issues. But those are, those are, that's, when you, that's when you have to involve uh, a professional whether it be um, you know, getting help uh, professionally from a doctor or whoever, a therapist, that's when you go that route. But if you have a kid that's just being, you know, just, just wants to create drama, create havoc in your household, that's a totally different story. That, that should be something the parent should handle within the home. We have an open phone line, 436-ME-TV, option 11. I do want to run a piece of videotape that explains why Suddenly, when your teenage son or daughter reaches that certain age, how everything changes. Number one, they're more aware of everything. They're intelligent. They know what's going on in the world. They know what's going on in the home. Yet the brain is not fully developed. So you have all these hormones going on. There's a lot of things going on with a teenager who is not fully grown. So let's roll a piece of videotape. It's got sound on it. Being a teen is different. That's the tape I want to roll. Yeah, tell me about it. When the adrenal glands start secreting androgens, which trigger the growth and activity of the skin's sebaceous glands, making skin more oily. Soon enough, more apocrine or sweat glands get activated, increasing body odor. Then comes the wave of hormonal agents that start activating the gonads. For boys, this influx of luteinizing hormones from the pituitary gland get testosterone brewing in the testes, and suddenly, that guy has up to 50 times more testosterone than he did before puberty. This also changes the shape of the male body, promoting hair growth and building up lean muscle mass, just as the increased presence of estrogen in girls rearranges the deposition of their fat, stimulating the growth of breasts. Humans are actually lucky to experience the craziness of puberty only once. Many other animals undergo multiple similarly intense hormonal rodeos as they enter sexually active periods, sometimes called the rut or heat, every new breeding season. Some male species completely stop eating during their breeding period because they're just that sex crazed. And yet, all that said, teens are far less ruled than their hormones than you might think. There are other factors at play here. For example, your favorite moody teen may be by turns punchy, angry, depressed, or in a zombie-like fog because of their chronic lack of sleep. Sleep is vital to everyone, but it's especially important for kids and teens because it's during sleep that your pituitary gland releases an essential growth hormone necessary for development. A normal sleep cycle driven by circadian rhythm is regulated by the daytime release of cortisol, which helps you wake up, and melatonin, which helps you wind down when it gets dark. But this biology of sleep timing changes as we age, and as puberty begins, teens' sleep clocks get pushed back. Most adults start oozing melatonin around 10 p.m.-ish, but one study showed that teenagers don't start producing melatonin until closer to 1 a.m. This may be because puberty's hormonal frenzy is stalling the release of melatonin and could partly explain why so many teens stay up late energized by the night but have a really hard time rolling out of bed with the alarm. So really, sleep is a very, very important thing. Eight hours. And interesting, uh, in that piece, they said that the melatonin doesn't kick in for a teenager until about 1 in the morning. 
you know, in some cases, I'll bet it's later than that, maybe 2, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. So that's maybe part of the problem why teenagers want to go to bed so late, why I went to bed so late when I was a teenager in early my into my early 20s. I was up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. That melatonin wasn't quite kicking in, and perhaps that's why it's hard to get your teenager out of bed and on to school in the morning. If you want to offer up an opinion, be my guest, my friends, 436 me tv option 11 sleep deprivation boy it can be used uh for <laughs> for a lot of different reasons but teenagers are not held against their will they're not being sleep deprived forcibly they're doing it to themselves and that could be part of the problem as well all right back in just a moment when you're looking for whirlpool innovation and quality who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power. More than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Unscramble. Sing, honey, sing. <laughs> call them classics, call them the best. Call them favorites, be a guest. Ah. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see, there's only one. Me. Me TV. Right. Me. 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 That's memorable, that's me. That's me. Me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's me. Me, me, me. Me, me TV. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. And away we go. Here's the place that makes you smile. Stick around and stay a while. We're the home of great TV. That's memorable. That's, That's me. me. Follow me, sir. Call them classics. Call them the best. Call them favorites. Be a guest. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see. There's only one. Me TV. All you have to do is watch me. Are you kidding me? Follow me. That's memorable. That's me. That's me. Me, me, me. Uh -huh. Me TV. The prefrontal cortex is the last to be hooked up and shaped. So it's important to keep in mind that just because your favorite teenagers stayed up until sunrise binge watching The Walking Dead the night before an exam, it doesn't mean they're dumb or lazy. Their brains are just literally finishing being built. But at the same time, because all this brain building is just starting to peak, this is also when the brain starts getting thinned out. You actually start losing connections that you don't use enough in a process called synaptic pruning, which has led to a theory that this is kind of a use it or lose it phase. Meaning, adolescence could be an especially important time to use your brain. Play an instrument, engage in sports, write poetry, learn a language. Because by doing these things, you're helping hardwire those synapses and giving your brain topiary a lovely, lasting shape. Whereas, if you're sitting around all day playing Candy Crush, those will be the connections that survive which you don't need. This shaping of the teen brain manifests itself in other ways, too, like in teenage attitudes. A group of scientists at the McLean Hospital in Massachusetts once hooked up a group of adults and a group of teens to MRI devices and then asked them to identify a series of expressions on photographs of adult faces. Interestingly, while adults correctly identified one expression as fear, the teenagers thought the faces showed anger, surprise, or shock. They weren't registering subtlety as well. Not only that, but the MRI images showed that adults and teens responded with different parts of their brains. Adults used the reasonable prefrontal cortex, while the teens mostly used the gut reaction emotional amygdala located farther back in the brain. Results like these might help explain why teenagers seem to experience frequent mood swings. For one, they tend to react quickly from the emotional part of their brain without running those reactions by the more rational frontal cortex. And two, it could be that they're just misreading expressions and therefore the intentions behind Behind them. The frontal cortex also helps people relate to and understand each other, and you can imagine what happens when concern is misjudged as anger or worry as disappointment. Mm. 
So interesting, my friends, it's the prefrontal cortex that's giving us all the problems as a teenager. And you know, um, somebody once told me, and this is, I think, true, and I found this to be true uh, with both of my kids, and they're both teenagers, is that these teenagers, they're just, they're hardwired in a way that their mission and their goal in life right now at this stage is to give you a problem. They want to create drama in your life, in your household, whatever, all right? My daughter, ever hear that song, Girls Just Want to Have a Fun by Cyndi Lauper? Well, it used to be fun with my daughter. Now everything is stressful. Now everything is a revolt. Everything is drama. Everything is about, you know, what, what happened five minutes ago. Why can't it change? There's so much drama. I have great kids. I have nothing to complain about. But these are the normal teen years, the growth years that a, t that a parent has to go through. So, again, I pose the question, how can we as parents survive the teen years? Our guest has arrived after the break. We'll get his expertise on how to survive. It only lasts for a certain length of time. It won't be forever, just like when they were first born and they didn't sleep. That didn't last forever. The teen stage will pass soon enough, my friends. Back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Not sure what you're watching? Want to see what's coming up next? Or just want to browse what's on without the hassle of flipping channels? Your wish has come true. Now you can view schedules for all the digital TV channels available in the Central Valley. Get local weather updates and forecasts. And listen to nationally syndicated Biz Talk Radio all on KVHF 4.1. Rescan your TV now, then tune in to Digital Channel 4.1 to start enjoying the all-new TV Guide. All right, my friends, our guest has arrived here a little bit late, but that's okay. Uh, we survived the first half hour and um, or so, and I offered up some opinions. And and uh, w Peter, welcome to the program. I'm, I'm sorry. You, it's okay. Good morning, it's, John. It's, How it's, are you? It's okay. Hi, everybody. It's okay. No okay. apology <laughs> needed because you, <laughs> you're not a first-time guest, but let's get this up here so we can hear you. But anyway, you. so I said during the course of the program, the first half hour here, that... Um, if you're just going through normal teenage stuff at your house, you know, they're getting fairly good grades, but they lock themselves up in their room and they slam the door and they talk back and they, that's kind of normal teenage growth. Mm -hmm. But if you have drug problems, if you have gang problems, then you got to call in the help. Right? That's a different sort of problem. Am I yeah, right about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I That's a different animal altogether. Both sides. Both sides. E even if you got a good kid, even if they're doing normal things like your kids, they're, they're normal kids, there's still drama. There's still chaos. There's still craziness. Right. It's in, in, if, Now, add in drugs, add in bad influences, add in no father in the house, no mother in the house, you know, whatever that might be, or extra people, uh, many siblings. Um, some of the kids have drug problems, uh, alcohol problems, uh, emotional problems. Now it gets complicated. So even in the best of circumstances, you're going to have a rough patch. Let's 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 break this down. Between we we don't get complex concepts till 12 years old, which means that you have a kid who's who's nine or ten, and that little girl's like Ariel, and she's wearing tiaras and pink tutus, and it's wonderful. And suddenly, at, at 12 years old, she comes in one day, all dressed in black with raccoon eyes and uh, an upside down cross, and says, "Hi, I'm Wiccan." And this is what happens. Suddenly they, they get this idea that what happened to my little kid? Where's that little nine-year-old kid that was so wonderful, my sweet little baby boy or girl? They have now morphed into this oppositional, defiant, what's in it for me kind of kid. That is normal. So nothing, no one has, has hijacked your kid. It's normal. Right. However, it drives you crazy because suddenly they're not listening to you. Suddenly everything you've done for them to this point doesn't matter, and, it's, and, you, and you're old and in the way. So we have a nice solution coming down here. What do you do about this? What do you do about it? Well, how do you survive, and what do you do? Right, right. Because so, there's a big difference. I mean, one caller that called in um, and talking about, um, you know, uh, one, of their, one of their children is, uh, I, think, I think his daughter, nine years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a big difference when you reach... 
13. You got that three to four year window from nine to 13. How much does your brain change between the age of nine to 13 or 14? The critical piece, thank you, great question. The critical piece of that is that you get complex concepts. We don't get cognitive. I don't know what that is. Okay. We don't get cognitive processing until about five years old, the ability to understand what's really going on around us. Your brain doesn't start imprinting till about five. If you think about what's your first memory, the first cogent memory that you're in, not okay. some snippet and bit, how old were you? Basically kindergarten. About four or five years old, the first time you can have a real solid memory that you're in. So between 9 and 13 and 14, what happens? Okay. That's cognitive processing. I start to know something's going on. At 12, I get complex concepts. The ability to understand that I can say this and this, but mean this. Suddenly, emotions. Where a kid has a couple of basic emotions when you're, when you're a kid. I'm angry or I'm so frustrated. So is that a little different what they went through at yeah. the age of five? Yeah, cognitive absolutely. process is different than yeah. what they're going through at the age of nine through 13? Cognitive processing says I know something's going on, but don't know what it is. C a complex concept says, oh, now I know what it is, and it's a little wacky. So I'm complex co uh, concepts means that there's something going on that the child doesn't understand? Correct. Well, actually, between five and 10 is what they don't understand. I'm old okay. enough to know something's going on, but young enough to no idea what it but is. But I notice the difference in my kids between the age of nine to say that teenage years. Complex concepts. Yeah. yeah. They have a sense of self. At eight years old, your, 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 your life is all about nostrils. You're looking up your parents' nostrils. Yeah. About 12 years old, you get some height. You get some stature, and all of a sudden, you, I, you, I, you, I don't eye want level. to. You're at eye yeah, level. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you, I don't want to, and you can't make me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you go, what happened to my kid? Where's the, Who's this defiant kid? Everything is the same as it was yesterday to me. Why are they so different? Because now they're getting a sense of self. For the first time, they realize, I'm my own person. I'm not just your yeah. kid. I'm yeah. my own person. Yeah. So that's pushing back. So this prefrontal cortex thing, uh, when does that kick in? At the age of 13, 14? I don't well, know. Well, uh, some, some of that's starting to come in at 13 or 14. The, the thing that makes what is it so that exactly? It's the executive department of your brain. Now, what does it do? What's the function? It makes, it makes theoretically, it makes good choices. You don't go that way, there's a rattlesnake. You don't go that way, there's a bear. You know what I mean? This is theoretically, this is to keep you safe, keep you protected, keep you moving forward in life. We don't have rattlesnakes and bears, so of course now it's dad or mom or friends or drugs or whatever it might be. What are the, what are the, what are the, what are the animals in the jungle for a kid these days and those things? So now I'm starting to deal with that stuff. So and that f that hasn't fully developed absolutely, yet, right? Absolutely. When does that prefrontal cortex develop? 25. Usually? At 25. That's when it's fully, right. full blown. So the idea of making a, a lifetime commitment, let's say to a marriage or to having a baby before you're 25, probably is not a good idea. Having said that, <clears throat> marriage is, is the most common age is, is uh, 22 years old. So you've got somebody who is very much in love, very much driven by testosterone and drama, uh, getting married and starting a life, maybe making children, probably not the best idea in the world. But let's go back to the teenage years. About 12 years old, we get complex concepts. By 14 years old, here's what's interesting. How old is your, how old is your son now? Uh, 16 and a half. Okay. You are now officially old and in the way. And that's just the way it is. Nothing changed for you, but suddenly you're old and in the way because your son now knows it all. Think back. Now, maybe you weren't like this, but at 16, I knew everything. Should have taken advantage of me, folks, when I was 16, I knew everything. Yeah. Now, 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 not so much. And, you know, they roll their eyes, and you can't believe how hopelessly outdated you are. And, oh, my God, can you, can you drop me off a block from school so nobody sees me with you in the van? So this is, this is the thing we're yeah. going through. And how dare you drive a van? That's an old man's oh, car. Oh, please. I'm, embar I'm embarrassed to be with you. you know, <laughs> in dad, a van? Oh, yeah, a you, van? Oh, my God. What <laughs> is that? kidding? So, you know, they're all, they're all about their new and fresh. And, well, this, of course, is oppositional defiant by our standards because they're not doing what we want them to do anymore. So... Solution-wise, let's take like, anybody want to call in with things about your, your kids, uh, maybe even your grown kids who have kids of their own, your grandkids. These are, still, these are still young people going through the very same things that we did. Different influences now with drugs and computers and whatnot. Whole different ballgame going on because kids don't want to get their licenses anymore. Kids don't want to grow up anymore. So that's a yeah, huge Except piece. for my son. He, wants, he wanted his license. So. But good good for to him. drive. Wanted to drive. Good for him. Yeah. Well, when we were kids, you know how it was. You got your license. It was escaping. You didn't have to be around mom and dad anymore. Yeah, I mean, I started driving when I didn't have a license, okay? <laughs> I mean, okay. I learned how to drive. Uh, my dad taught me when I was like 9 or 10 years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, but, uh, yeah, these days a little different. A lot of kids, they don't want their license because... No. Because they don't want to drive. The, the obligation, the responsibility. I have to insurance for the car. I have to put gas in the car. I have oh, to gee, maintain the car. Oh, gee, I might have to car. get a job. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't want a job yet. I don't want a yeah. I, I want a I want a house. I want a car. I I want money, but I don't want to actually have to do anything other than sit in my room and and, and play my video games. I can't yeah. tell you, John, how many young people come into my office and I, and I say, well, have you got any um, goals? Any you know, what do you, you see yourself doing something down? Yeah. I mean, I used to hate what I do you know. want to be when you grow up, but you ask them. And the biggest thing I get from young people these days is, you know what I want to be? I want to be a video tester. I want to be. I want to get video games delivered to my door, and I'll spend a couple of days testing them, and I'll teach people how to fix them. A video and, tester. A video game tester. That's all the kids want to do because it's what they do anyway. That's not a job. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything. I'll just get a ton of money for doing what I'm doing. Well, wouldn't that be nice? I'd like to get a ton of money for breathing. I'm doing that anyway. Pay me for that. <laughs> well, it's kind of the same thing, you know. Actually wow. going out and getting a job, actually showing up on time. No, they don't want to do that. The young yeah. people are a very entitled group. Yeah. Interesting. We have a call. Okay. Here. All right, caller. Uh, maybe you've been watching the whole show. Maybe you've just tuned in. I, I don't know. Do you have teenage kids at home, caller? Yeah, he's out of control. Um, he, uh, he's embarrassed to take him to school. He's ashamed of me. Um, Boy, you're, like, you're hard you're to understand. Bullying me. You're bullying me. Okay, and I, I can't understand. We're going to have to cut it off, Gary. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry, caller. You're going to have to call back because we can't understand a word you're saying. No offense, but that's just the way it is. I couldn't hear anything out of that speaker that, that came off uh, through that phone. Anyway, 436 Me TV, option 11. So call in if you have a teenager at home that is punchy, angry, depressed in a fog, walking around like the walking dead, like a zombie, my friends. You have one of those? I've had one of those before. <laughs> Back in just a moment. <laughs> Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance, and you, when only the best will do. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on the program, we got a caller waiting to get on the air. And caller, uh, I don't know, have you been watching the entire program or you just tuned uh, in? Not quite all of it, but I did see Dr. Peter come in. And uh, I know you were discussing, I had, there's a lot of honeydews I have to do, but I try to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to, cause, well, at least I try to listen, pick up some of the subjects that you're on. And uh, I've been through a little bit of what uh, Dr. Peter uh, has uh, talked about, kids uh, being really, I had a one strong will uh, daughter. I have two daughters, and they're five years apart. And one pretty strong will daughter, my older one, um, she, she, I didn't like herself. She was a little, a little heavy, and um, she, and she had a lot of chip on her shoulders, uh, a lot of talk back, and uh, we finally it finally resolved it where it um, I'll say it got better. It got better. Uh, her grades got better. I don't know. It just a phase like you were saying, but you know my question today is. Or two questions, John. You yeah. can get you got a pencil with you. <laughs> got them right here. Early? Okay. <laughs> First one. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, John, but it's going to affect you a little bit. My question. Yeah. Is there, and the question is: Is um, will a offspring or or your children be more? Uh, let's see, more confident or more uh, listening to you with a couple, a man and a woman, than a single parent. Now, that's my first question. You want me, to answer, you want me to answer that right now? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That'll be all right. I'll listen and talk. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> That's my experience. The answer is no, because even yeah. though I'm a yeah. single father, okay? I know, yes. I yeah. oftentimes invite my ex-wife over to my house and say, hey, come on, we got to talk about the kids. So she yeah. comes over. And I'm giving away family secrets now. And, the, and both kids are sitting there. We, we want to discuss some things with them. And what do my kids do? What do you think they do, Peter? They sit there and they make comments. They laugh. Roll Everything eyes. is funny. Mm. Everything is funny. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my daughter's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's hey, a hey, joke. John, yeah, hey, so John I know it. this is a, per John, this is a yes. personal question. Does she have custody or do you? Uh, you don't have to tell me if you don't want. I don't care. It's no big secret. You can go down to the courthouse and look it up. We <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we okay. share custody. It's 50-50 agreement. 50-50, so okay. Yeah, we both, we both have a handle in the kids. But what I'm yeah, saying is... Good. Is that, is that when my ex-wife and I are trying to communicate in front of the kids, the yep. kids feed off of that, Peter. They okay, feed off right. of it, and they make these snide comments. Mm -hmm. Everything is yeah. a joke. Everything yeah. is funny. Oh, do you hear what Dad just said? <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, 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 I don't think it's any better, and if had we stayed married, it probably we'd be facing some of the same problems. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, and and doc, Dr. Peter, this is the Dr. Peter. Um, do you work with people that are gay and lesbian? They're, at least a child is, and the parents come in trying to kind of get a handle on the situation, uh, what to do about it, how to handle it. Uh, that's my that's my next question. Okay, hey, uh, uh, hang on before you okay. answer that, Peter. Uh, uh, caller, uh, what do you think about my answer? Uh, pretty good. I, I kind of agree a little bit. I still say um, if you if you resolved all your issues and got remarried or whatever, um, I think the children would probably like it if that could happen, if that could happen. Um, and it has happened where people remarry. They, they start all over again. I remember listening to this one program as a Christian um, he counselor, and he said, you have to start all over again. And Dr. Peter might agree with me, I hopefully, yeah. um, Let's get you know, take from now. scratch. Dating, you're not living together, you're dating. Yeah. And okay. you continue dating until you like each other again or resolve issues. Okay, you got <laughs> yeah. it. Okay, what thank you, you John. Uh, Thank you, caller. Thank you. Why don't you weigh in on all that, Peter? You got nine minutes. The floor is yours, <laughs> my friend. You can have the rest of the time on the, the show. <laughs> the, there's. Thank you. Great, great question, and thank you very much. Um, you, 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 you put a couple of things on the table, so let's try to deal with all of that. Yeah. Number one, does does having a parent or parents who are gay or lesbian affect the quality of the the, the upbringing or the the the, the 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 discipline or the input or the support? Uh, my experience says um, no difference. As long as you're loving, kind parents who are teaching your child how to do the right things, learn the right value system, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen spectacular parents, uh, uh, no matter who they are. I've seen horrible parents, no matter who they are. So really, it's yeah. the quality of the individual and the relationships. I will tell you that oftentimes, uh, partners who are committed uh, in a society that does not necessarily smile in this kind of thing usually have to be more bonded usually have to be more resilient. So in some ways, I won't say they're better parents, but their tool bag is maybe a little bit yeah. more full. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, having young people, you, you know, you make a good point. They get to be about, you know, John was saying, between 9 and 13, my kid changed. Yeah, they got what we call complex concepts. They have a sense of self. I am not just your kid. I am now my own man, which is wonderful. Uh, or a girl, as the case may be. Now, as parents, we're not ready to give up parenting. Your kid gets to be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're still parenting, parenting, parenting. Suddenly at 13 years old, the kid pushes back. I, I, I don't want to, I don't have to, and you can't make me. And, of course, most parents, what they do is just double down. What do you mean? Listen, your butt is mine you to 18 years old. You get in there, get upstairs, take off that dumb hat, give me your iPod, and get your algebra done. We're just going to parent the crap out of them until they get to be 18 years old. Of course, when you do that, what happens? You're making every choice for the child. They don't get to make and, one and for themselves. And maybe they'll rebel. Well, probably, because they, what, what does a kid want at 14 years old? They're entering what we call the, the age of differentiation. 
Mm. I am now my I, I I am now doing it my way. Well, yeah, but you're you're 14 years old and you don't know anything. You want to have you don't have a job, you don't have an apartment, you don't have a car, <clears throat> but you want to be treated as completely independent, and you should be able to go and come as you please. You should be able to stay up as late as you want to, watch the shows, go to school if you want to. You should have all these choices. A parent has to understand by 14 years old they're done. Look back at your own life for one second. Weren't you done with your parents by 14? You still had to play by the curfew, play by the rules, because you're in the house, you don't have any, you, know, you can't go anywhere. But you roll your eyes, much like John was saying a few minutes ago, they sit them down, the kids are rolling their eyes and laughing. Because they're done. They're not interested in anything you have to say. So the more you impose those, we're going to punish you, they're just rolling their eyes. Well, and one caller earlier today said that if you do have two parents in the household, uh, if one parent gets fed up and they're on the verge of blowing their top, then the other parent can take over. That's the only advantage I see. But, but, um, possible. Yeah, possible. But, what, but not. It's not a hundred percent, though. No. Well, the, what what is the kid's goal? The kid's goal is to figure out how to get past around their parents. That's what that's what we do. How do we get around mom, yeah. mom and dad? I mean, I don't know if you did this, but I, I was a good kid. But yeah. still, in high school, I snuck out my window and went and, you know, hang out with my buddy for a couple hours at night and then snuck back in the window and they didn't know about it. And I was so thrilled I got away with this. I didn't do anything. I was a good kid. Yeah. But I did it. I was oppositional defiant just because apparently I needed to be because my dad was, you know, very difficult and, and it would not have been gone well if he caught me. Uh, but I had to do it anyway. So there is that even with good kids. Yeah. Now, if a kid is oppositional defiant anyway, it just doubles. Now, bigger piece here, what do you do? We're know. describing the symptoms. We're describing this is what happens. We're explaining why it happens. They're looking for differentiation, which means I'm, I'm trying to figure out who I am. I'm 14 years old. I'm trying to figure out who I am, and I have no idea who I am because I'm only 14. But I have a good idea who I'm not. I'm not you. I'm not you, Mom and Dad. So you're the way you dress, the way music you listen to, the car you drive, the way you decorate your house, the food you eat, the polit political party, religion. All of that gets rejected out of hand because... I, I don't know who I am, but I know who I'm not. I'm not you, so all your stuff yeah. gets pushed away. And now you have the kid who's wearing his hat on sideways and his, you know, his uh, pants five sizes too big. They're dropping down around his butt. His shoes unlaced. And, you know, and you're looking at him, my God, you're not going out looking like that, are you? And the kid's thinking, perfect. That's what I want. Mom and dad pissed off. That's what they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, that's their jewel. If rolling their eyes makes you go, don't you do that to me. I'm trying to talk to you, young man. Great. Guess what? He just controlled you. That's the idea, and this is the point I'm getting to. At this age, what they're looking for is control in a life in which they have none. So, as a parent, what do you do? Here's the solution I'm giving you right now. Take off your parent hat when you're 14 years old. You're done. They're done. They're done with you. You're not done with them, but they're done with you. Take off the hat. Now they're just going to roll their eyes and start pushing you away. No matter what you say, no matter how much parenting you do, they're just going to push it away. Best thing you can do, become a consultant. Take off your parent hat and become a consultant. Now, mm. help the kid process what they're doing. And let me give you an example of what I mean. Your kid comes to you and says, i got an algebra test tomorrow. I hate algebra. There's a new video game coming out. I'd rather stay up tonight and play the video game. Now, the parent, of course, is going to say, no way. You're not going to play that video game. Get upstairs and, and, and study your algebra, which the kid is not going to do anyway because I'm going through the oppositional defiant part. If you're a consultant, you go, oh, you'd rather play the video game than, than study for your algebra? Yeah. Well, how are you going to do an algebra test? Oh, I, I paid attention in class. I'll get a good grade. Oh, okay, good. Do that then. So the kid stays up till 3 o'clock in the morning playing a video game, gets up 7 o'clock in the morning looking like death eating a cracker, and has to go to school to take this test. They have not studied for and they haven't slept. How do they do on the test? Probably bomb the test. We have to take yeah. a short break here? No, we're done almost with the show. One oh, minute. Okay. Uh, become a consultant. Help them process what they would have done. So it didn't work out, what happened? Um, teacher didn't like me, I got a lousy grade. Okay, well, what are you gonna do? I have to go to school on Saturday, take a makeup test. Did you wanna take a makeup test? No. Did you wanna get a, be away from your friends? No. Did you wanna have to go to school Saturday? No. Well, I guess maybe if you studied, you would've got a better grade, wouldn't have to do all this. Basically, make it their choice, that's my point. Give them control. Let them make every stupid choice they can on your watch when the consequences are only this big. Don't do it when they're 19 or 20 when they could drop out of school or lose something serious in their life. Good Let them advice. be in control. Let them make stupid choices on your watch. Hey, see you next month, Peter. Perfect. All right. Can I, next month, can I give you a wake-up call? Why don't like you? like nine? Why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, sir. Thank you for your time. Peter Nazaridian. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be Becky Cinema. The movie lady, Peter, tomorrow. Yeah, you're my favorite woman. <laughs> <laughs> she is, I know. Back tomorrow, and I hope you have a good day.